Have you lost a parent, a friend or a relative as a result of a poorly done medical procedure or surgery? Have you suffered loss as a result of a medical error? Welcome to the Wakilim Kononi Show, where we solve your legal issues just at the click of a button. I am your host, Masi Wanza. Let's take a look at Alan's story, where he suffered a tragic medical experience at the hospital. My name is Alan. Uh, about four months ago, my wife gave birth to a beautiful, bouncing baby girl. It was a great moment. It was a moment of pride. It was a really happy time. Um, she had given birth at Pamoja Hospital through a C-section. She had undergone an operation as the complications during birth and she couldn't give birth the natural way. Unfortunately, two months ago, she fell ill and we had to go back to hospital because wondering what the issue was, we wanted to know what had happened. At the hospital, they did some tests and um, they analyzed her symptoms. She was complaining of stomach aches, she was weak, she was always fatigued, she was generally ill. And uh, the doctor said that uh, she had malaria. So we bought some medication and she went back home. She faithfully took the medicine and we just hoped for the best, hoping that she'd get well after about a week or so. But unfortunately, two weeks later, she was even worse. She was getting worse by the day. So we went back to Pamoja and they conducted another round of tests on her. But this time, she was seen by a different doctor. Uh, the doctor said that she had traces of cancer and that the excessive bleeding was as a result of leukemia. So we once again um, bought medication and we went back home hoping that this this time she'd get better. But unfortunately the situation was still more or less the same. As a matter of fact, she was even worsening by the day. She was getting sicker and sicker and the bleeding was now becoming excessive. So this time we went back hospital but we decided to go to a different hospital as Amoja had already um, diagnosed us, diagnosed her twice and in the two instances they would not given us a proper solution. So this time when we go to hospital the doctors conducted tests on her and they wanted to find the source of the bleeding and they said that they discovered that some metallic object had been left in her womb. And this, it had caused some rot to develop, and this is what was causing the excessive bleeding. So we were quite disappointed to hear this because this was a, this was not something small. This was a major occurrence, and we were surprised that even Pamoja could not diagnose this. So the doctors scheduled her for surgery, which was to be, which, it was just a few days after went to hospital, and so we. We arranged everything, we, we, took, uh, we took some money out of the account, we held a fundraiser, the insurance chipped in, and we did everything that we could. As in financially, we, tried, we did our best and after, some, after a while we raised enough money. So we went back and everything was set, but unfortunately just some hours before the surgery, she passed away. I think that was the lowest moment of my life. Right now, my newborn daughter, she'll have no mother as she grows up. I don't even know what to do, so, so what should I do? Alan is facing a legal issue known as medical negligence. So what then is medical negligence? My name is Miri Dennis, an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. And unfortunately, the situation we've heard from uh, Alan is a rampant and popular situation, which uh, basically boils down to medical negligence. Negligence basically is the breach of a duty of care that one person owes to another. Um, when we rely on doctors, we rely on them for their particular specialized skill, and when they do not perform to this standard, that's when we say medical negligence has occurred. When an, an example of medical negligence will be something like uh, misadministration of uh, medicine or a misdiagnosis of a patient. When such a circumstance arise, arises, 
Alan or any other person would have as enshrined in the constitution, they have a right to the highest attainable standards of health. So when such instances arise, you have recourse in three ways. You can either decide to to settle or reconcile this matter out of court, which um, in legal speak is known as alternative dispute resolution, or you can decide to report the instance to the medical, medical boards. There is a medical practitioners and dentists board and there's also a nurses board. These are boards which you can report such malpractice and neg negligence to to allow the sitting to evaluate the circumstance and come up with a result. The last option would be taking this matter to court because as we said under the constitution every citizen has a right to the highest attainable standards of health. The difference between seeking rec recourse in a medical board and the court is the medical board does not have the capacity and power to order for compensation uh, of whatever costs or loss that a particular person had, but the court has this uh, power which they can, uh, they can order the compensation be made out of the fatality or negligence by a particular doctor. So I think in Alan's case, he has these three options that he want to pursue in an attempt to seek justice for negligence that occurred. We have come to the end of yet another episode. I have been your host, Marcy Wanza. For more information on simplified legal issues, log on to our website and to our social media pages as is played on your screen. Remember, ignorance of the law is no defense. Until next time, see you.